Can you hear me, Dad? I can. Good. I hear blues. <laughs> with cool. an awesome guitar, as a matter of fact. Yeah. <laughs> well, I heard the Fender Strats are like a thing with blues players. Yeah, that, it's, there's something about it. That's 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 what they say. That's what they say. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, Sweet, dude. Yeah, hey, hopefully everybody can hear you and hear me. Um, I'm just going to play a little bit, make sure you everybody out there can hear my voice and hear my guitar. I can hear it. All right, perfect. Well, as long as you can hear, <laughs> that's that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, if you can hear Steve, okay, you can hear me, okay. Please just put yes in the chat box. That would be awesome. And also, tell us where you're from. As everybody's filtering in here, it'd be great to know uh, your city, maybe where you're from, your state. Uh, and so, what would be also really cool is if you could tell us what you hope to get out of this webinar. Maybe yeah, just one cool. simple thing, so Steve and I can check that out. Of course, today we're going to be talking about 12-bar blues, so I hope that's why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much what we're going to talk about. Yeah. And and to be honest with you, 12-bar blues, if you don't really understand what 12-bar blues is or how it works, it's absolutely crucial to, A, learning how to play the blues, and B, learning how to jam with other players. So it's really important exactly. that you learn that. So that's what we're going to talk about today, guys, uh, the 12-bar blues, and we're going to See if you can break it down on exactly how it works. So you can walk away from this webinar with hopefully, a, if you already understand it, a better understanding of how it all works. And if you don't have any clue about it, then this is going to be perfect for you. There's a lot of people out there who have played sort of bluesy stuff uh, or played some rock and roll or just kind of play, but they don't really understand the chord structures of the, of the 12 bar blues. Yeah. So we're going to break that down for you. Today. Yeah. When, you know, when I was learning how to play when I was younger, one of the coolest things was when somebody actually showed me how the 12 bar blues works. I realized how important it is for jamming with other people because, like, if you get together with somebody and you've never played with them before and you go, Well, what song do you know? Well, that's cool. I don't know that one. Well, what song do you know? And then you say a song and they go, Well, that's cool, but I don't know that one. But when you say, let's jam some 12 bar blues in the key of G or the 12 bar blues in the key of A or something like that, that's something that is sort of a common language to guitar players. So it's really important to learn how to do that to, to actually play with other people. Man, that's huge, guys. Once you get this, you can literally walk into a room of musicians and just, you know, if there's a bass player there, a keyboard player there, uh, a couple of guitars or whatever, you can just jump in and jam like in minutes, right? And swap licks and people can just go around the room with their solos. Yeah. Very cool. I, I, I was going right. to say, I, when I was younger, I used to have a buddy, and he and I would get together, um, usually at his house, and we would play 12-bar blues for hours. Like, what we would do is is he would play 12 measures, and then I would solo, and then I would play 12 measures, and then he would solo, and we would just go back and forth like that for forever. It was awesome. Yeah, you can. And once you recognize the structure, guys, you're going to hear it in uh, rock and roll. I mean, you can kick in the distortion pedal and get the rhythm a little bit. You got yourself a kind of grinding uh, rock tune. You can hear it in jazz, right? You can take these, well, I won't get into all the details. We won't steal our thunder just yet. Yeah, right. Well, Dr. let me Stein. let me just start off by saying this. In order to learn the 12-bar blues, needless to say, you have to have some knowledge of chords, right? Mm -hmm. And in the course, I go through a bunch of different chords and notes on the guitar and learning where everything is and all that kind of stuff. So if, if, you're, if you're with us right now and you're not exactly sure of everything that I talk about, don't get worried about it, okay? For me, an A chord is an A chord. Whether you play it here, or you play it here, or you play it up here, or wherever it is you want to play it, you can learn more things, but the most important thing is, is is it doesn't matter whether you have seven places you can play an A chord. It matters that you have one. So as long as you've got mm -hmm. one place to play it, you can you can do these things. But I just want you to know that we're kind of jumping right into, you know, the twelve bar blues. So we need to know something about chords and and stuff like that. So we're going to touch on it a little bit, but I just don't want you to worry if you don't know all of these things. We're going to cover all that stuff in the course anyway. Right. Um, so anyway, you can just kind of interject and, and lead me as needed, Dan, as I, okay. as I start discussing this whole thing. But basically, if you think about the blues, 
what makes the blues so unique, right? What makes the blues different than rock or metal or country? It sounds bluesy. Well, that's the thing is, is, is <laughs> the term blues is a style of music, but when we say something like, you, usually when people think of blues, they think of a rhythm, right? <laughs> something like that is what reminds them of being bluesy. Right. Um, and there's all kinds of different ways of, of doing these sorts of things. But that's kind of what blues is. For me, what is important for you to walk away from today is understanding that what makes blues so unique is that when we say the word rock, rock can mean a thousand things. When we say rock, you might think of Metallica and you might think of the Rolling Stones and they're nothing like each other. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, categories sometimes can get really confusing for people. Yeah. When you say metal or you say country, again, it means all kinds of different things. But when you say blues, there are really two things that come to a guitar player or a musician who plays blues. Two things that come to mind. Number one is a specific kind of rhythm. And number two is the 12-bar blues progression. As okay. I just kind of said earlier, what's cool about the blues is if I was with Dan right now, if, if Dan was, was here at my studio and we were going to jam, Dan and I may not know the, name, the same songs together, but if I said, well, let's just have some fun and jam some blues, or I went out to see a friend of mine's band, and I don't play the same songs that their band plays, I might get up and just jam some sort of bluesy song, right? I might play, you know, something like that, and it just turns into a 12-bar blues jam, essentially. Um, so that's what we want to talk about is what, what is 12 bar blues and how do you do it? Okay. Makes sense. So yeah, this is perfect, Steve. So what I really wanted to do today, guys, is to make sure that we stay laser focused on one thing you can walk away from and actually implement in your playing. Okay. So we're not going to throw a ton of stuff at you. This is going to be keep you super tight. So Steve just talked about rhythm and what defines a blues. And then as far as this discussion goes, we're going to just keep it on how the 12-bar blues actually works. Does that sound good? Yeah. Dan, if you could do me a favor, your, your vocal is cutting out just a little bit. Can you kind of stay closer to your microphone? Is this better, sir? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Should I just stay in, just in that mood? <laughs> just don't, don't move at all. No, no, no. Okay. It does sound better, though. Moving. I can hear you better. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Now I'm distracted. I'm not sure what I wanted to say. <laughs> oh, sorry. I can't move. That is my fault. <laughs> no, he's right, though. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on what 12-bar blues means. Well, 12-bar blues, 12-bar means 12 measures. So what happens here, what makes the blues so unique is, is music can be bluesy. Okay? Music can have blues influences. Music can sound like it's from the blues. We're talking about the blues which starts with this 12 measure sequence that gets repeated over and over and over so if you watch bb king or steve ray vaughn or zz top or joe bonamassa or all kinds of different players like that you're going to hear songs that sound bluesy and then you're going to hear songs that are 12 bar blues they all have them you'd be hard pressed well, to find a bb king song that isn't 12 bar blues to be honest with you um why don't you play it Absolutely. And just to throw all bars so we can get in our ears. Absolutely. So we all know what we're about. Okay, and I'm just going to play a real basic version of 12 bar blues. Okay, so here's, cool. well, I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to play in the key of A. So I'm just going up to an A chord here and I'm going to go. start all over again sweet now i know it tell me if you've heard this say yes if you've heard this kind of thing before right um yes whether it's on the radio or on a song that you listen to or even commercials sometimes like my yep. kids have now adopted this thing because they've heard me do it so many times that they'll go hey dad there's a blues tune or something like that you know yeah and uh so that's what it is that structure right there and what's cool about it is it's again it's 12 measures long it consists of three chords, and we're going to talk about those three chords so you understand how this works. But the progression, the movement of those chords is the same every time. 
And there's okay. two things that make that super cool. And then, Dan, if you've got something, there's two things that make that cool. Number one is you as a guitar player can become more confident with your playing because you know where to go. You know what comes next. And mm -hmm. if you're already there or someday you get to the point where you're going to learn how to solo, this becomes a really important thing because you can anticipate where the chords are going while you're playing, which is just huge. Got it. So all I was going to say is that, um, guys, if you break this down to the most simple element, it's three chords played in a certain order. That's right. That's it. That's sometimes it. you repeat a chord. Sometimes you play it two or three or four times. Sometimes you play it just once. But the bottom line is you can play a 12-bar blues and you can jam with other musicians just because you know three little chords. They can be three powerful. They're just chords that just go in a certain order. And they can have variations on that 12-bar blues, but the one that Steve's showing right here is just the basic one. Yep. Cool. Yeah, we're just keeping it as, as straight as possible. So what we need to do is we need to understand, first of all, what are the three chords? And then second of all, what's the 12-bar blues? How does this work? Right. So let me explain to you the three chords, okay? Now, these chords... You don't have to know a bunch of theory. I got a nice, easy way of showing you this, okay? The three cool. chords that you're going to use are what we refer to as the one, the four, and the five chords in whatever key you're in. Now, that doesn't mean you have to know all your keys and all your key signatures. You don't have to know all that. What I want you to think about is if I was in the key of A, for instance, which I am right now, if I was in the key of A, what's my first chord? A. A. That's it, okay? Now, you may have played other songs before, and this is going to ring a bell as I keep talking because you're going to go, hey, I've played those chords to get, you know, many times together. But what I do is I'm just going to count up on my hand. If I think if I'm in the key of A, okay, and no matter what key we're in, what we're going to do is we're just going to start on the first note, which is A, and we're just going to count up. So A, B, C, D, and E. We're not going to worry about sharps and flats. All. We're not going to worry about any of that stuff. We're just counting A, B, C, D, E. A, D, and E would be my first note, my fourth note, and my fifth note, which also means it's my first chord, my fourth chord, and my fifth chord. Now think about this. A, awesome. D, and E. If I play those chords, A, D, and E, I could play songs like that. Right? Tom Petty, there's there, I, there's literally a thousand songs I could play with those three chords together. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, again, the, the human brain always, whenever I talk about this stuff, people always go, well, what about the key of G? And what about the key of C? And what about the key of F sharp? Don't worry about every key on the planet right now. Let's just start with one key and develop that, and then we can always move it into other keys, uh, which, again, we'll learn how to do all that kind of stuff. It's called transposition. We'll learn how to do that in the guitar course, but let's just start with one key. So we've got an A, a D, and an E chord. Mm -hmm. So those are our three chords. Now we're going to learn how those three chords work in this 12-measure sequence. So what okay. I like to do is I like to explain to people, and if you have a piece of paper and a pencil or you have something handy, I would grab it, and you can just write this down any way that makes sense to you, okay? What I do is I take the 12-bar blues, and I break it into three pieces. So each piece is four measures long. So I have first piece, middle piece, last piece, okay? So my There's first... three sections with four measures each. That's right, right. Okay. So my first section, okay, is four measures long. And all I'm going to do for four measures is play the one chord. That's all I'm going to do for those first four measures. Okay. So I'm just going to take a plain old A chord here. Okay, If you play bar chords or whatever, that's perfectly fine, but I'm just going to use a plain old A chord, and I'm just going to give it uh, this kind of thing. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, three, four, So for four measures, and there's a million things we can do with the rhythms and all this stuff, but let's just understand this thing first, mm -hmm. okay? So we have four measures of a one chord. Now, why am I calling it a one instead of calling it an A? Dan, do you have an answer? <laughs> well, how would we, when do we ask the uh, 
our students. Okay. Who knows the answer to that question? Why am I calling it a one chord instead of just calling it an A like it is? Yay. Okay, hold because on. Because you're in the key of A, and the first chord of key of A is A. That's right. That's yes. right. Okay. The other reason, which I see some people are saying too, the other reason is, is because then we can move it in other keys. Because mm -hmm. if I'm in the key of G, what's my first chord? G. If I'm in the key mm -hmm. of D, what's my first chord? D. D. So when we talk about one and four and five, the reason we're talking about it that way is because maybe we don't want to play in the key of A. Maybe mm -hmm. we want to play in the key of G or some mm -hmm. other key. So learning how to refer to this as a one, four, five is going to be really beneficial down the line. Okay. So, okay. um, Hey, let me just clear up one thing. Kate. Yeah. Uh, there are some people may be confused by this. Steve and I are using the term bar and measure interchangeably. They, the, the bar line that you see in a piece of sheet music that actually is a line that's drawn vertically between two bar lines is one measure. The bar line is what actually creates your measures. So if you just had a bunch of notes across the page, no bar lines, you wouldn't have a, me I guess it'd be one ginormous measure. Right. But in order to keep it structured, we use bar lines. So uh, the measure is the stuff between the bar lines, and the bar is the th thing that actually creates the measure. So when we say 12 bar blue, and then Steve starts talking about, we're going to play this chord for 12 or four measures, that would be four bar lines if you're looking at the sheet of music okay right so and, that. and in the the rock and roll world too bar is a slang for measure like when people say uh, bar yep. they're, they're just it's a slang for measure so that's kind of yep. what that is too but yeah so a bar a measure yeah it's the same thing yeah that's right so okay so we've got this one section this first section for four measures or four bars whatever you want to call it that's just a one chord. And in this case, we're playing in the key of A, so I'm plugging in an A chord for four measures. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go to the middle section, which is also four measures long. Okay? But in this section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a new chord. I'm going to go to my four chord. Now, yep. what is the four chord in the key of A? Remember, you can count up. What is the four chord in the key of A? A, B, C, D. D. So I'm going to go to the D chord now. In this middle section right here, I'm going to the four chord, which in the key of A is D. A, B, C, mm -hmm. D, just like Dan just counted. So I'm going to go to that chord for two measures of this four. I'm going to go to mm -hmm. it for the first two measures. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, two. And then for the next two measures of this four measure sequence, I'm going to go back to the one chord, which is the A chord. So what I'm going to do here before we go on, and hopefully you've got your guitar with you so you can play along with me here, and if you don't, run and grab it super quick and then come on back, okay? So what we're <laughs> going to do is we're going to play the first section, which was all A, the A chord, for four measures. Then we're going to play the middle section here, which went D chord, D chord, A chord, A chord. Okay, we're okay. going to play that together. So here we go. So all we're doing is playing the first four measures of 12 bar blue, then the next four measures of this 12 bar blues. So this is eight measures of the 12. And there's only going to be two chords in what Steve's about to play. Yep. The so A chord and the D chord. So here we go. One and two and ready, go. A. Second measure, third measure, fourth measure, now here we go, we gotta go to the D. Again, then we go back. And it's already beginning to sound like music with just that one chord change in there, okay? Yep. Now this cool. brings us this brings us to the end, which is arguably the coolest part of this whole thing. We're going to the last four measures now, which is often referred to as the turnaround. Okay, because if you were a bass player and a guitar player is soloing for ten minutes, 
this part here is the part that wakes them up and goes, oh, we got to start all over again. Okay. So the turnaround, <laughs> it tells us we're turning around and we're going to start all over again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this last four measures here, we're now going to introduce the five chord. So cool. remember the five chord, if we count up A, B, C, D, E. So we're going to go to a, a five chord here. Okay. Cool. So let me explain to you this last four measures before I play it though. Okay. Yeah. What we're going to do, and I want you to answer this. We'll see if anybody can get this. So in this last four measures, I'm going to play five for a measure, four for a measure, and then I'm going to play one for two measures. So I'm going five, four, one, one. Five, four, one, one. What are those chords? Plug them in and put them in the chat. What are those chords? What would it be? Five, four, one, one. And remember, we're in the key of A here. Mm-hmm. Who's got the answer? Which chords are represented by the five, the four, and the one in the key of A? And put them in order. Yeah. Who's got the answer? Oh, some people do. Okay, perfect. So there it yep. is. There it is. So it's E, D, and then A for two measures. A, and then A. So if you think about it, this last four measures is the introduction of the five chord, which in this case is E. So that five chord is what perks us up and goes, hey, we're going to be starting all over again. So I'm going to play five, four, one, one, which in this case would be E, D, a, A. So let's play that measure, or excuse me, that section together. Those last four measures, or those last four bars. E, D, A, A. Let's play that together. One and two, and ready, go. E. Go to your four chord, which is D. And then we just nice. start all over, and we stay on A again and start all over. So he, before we move on, here's what I want you to learn how to see. And you can use a piece of paper right now, but eventually you're going to want to kind of visualize this. Three sections. First section is 1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. Second section is 4-4-1-1. Four, four, one, one. And the third section, the turnaround, the final section is 5 four, one, one. Mm -hmm. That is the basic structure of 12 bar blues. Mm -hmm. Now we can twist and turn and morph this thing into a million different things as we go. Okay. But this is the first place to begin to understand terminology like Dan and I've been saying like bar and measure and all these different kinds of things in one, four, five, understanding what those things are. And then being able to, to play this thing. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you get together with somebody and you say, hey, let's play 12 bar blues in the key of A, they're going to be thinking something very, 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 very similar to what you're thinking, right? Again, depending on how they learned it, they might play a four chord right here or a five chord right here. And again, in the course, we talk about all that kind of stuff, the variations that we do in a 12 bar sequence. Okay, but the variations are very small. It's not like you twist this thing upside down or anything. You don't nope. do that. You don't. Don't start on the five chord. That's right. That's right. You don't. <laughs> don't you, start you, on the seventh chord. That's right. So if that kind of makes sense, that's how this thing is built. So what I think we should do real quick before we move on, let's try this together. Okay. Cool. So we're going to play this Sounds whole 12 bar sequence together. So again, hopefully you've got your guitar with you. And let's get ready on A and we're going to go one and two and ready, go one. <laughs> Sections, we gotta go to the four chord. D. D. We gotta get back to the one chord, which is A. One. There you go. Now we go to the turnaround, which is the five chord, E. To the D, four chord. Back to the one chord. Nice. 
very cool, the Steve. Structure. Yeah, that's the structure of 12 Bar Blues. That's how it works. That is the very basic 12 Bar Blues, guys. And if you can get that, you can walk in and play with some folks. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, I can hear you better I now. I saw Thank you straining. <laughs> I leaned in. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's all right. I do this all day long, so I actually have a backrest that I've never okay. rested on, ever. I, I well, never maybe I should just quit being lazy and just sit up. <laughs> this, is, this is how I sit like all I'm day in class. long. <laughs> yes, Professor. Oh, You're not slouch. Funny. Hold your shoulders back. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so look, guys. This is the 12 bar blues, the very most basic element of blues playing. We have barely even scratched the surface on what there is to learn about blues, right? This is just like the foundation of everything. Mm -hmm. You can take this exact chord structure. You can change the chords from just regular major chords to dominant seventh, dominant seventh chords, which just makes it sound even more blues. You can add a rhythm element into it. And I'm going to ask you some of this here in just a minute. When you add a little bit of rhythm into it, it, it can amp up the bluesiness a little more. You can go to a clean tone and play minor sevenths, and it gives it a completely different sound that you may have heard in some blues songs. They sound kind of like minorish, but they're bluesy, you know, and usually they're slower. That's another element. But so, I mean, basically all of music is either harmony or rhythm, right? And so what Steve's showing you right now is the most fundamental element of blues playing. Okay, so again, let's just keep going so you can walk away from this having something that's tangible that you're going to be able to use in your playing, which is awesome. So we've just learned how to play this 12-bar blues using open chords, okay? Here's the thing that just blew me away, and this is going to require you to know some things about your fretboard and stuff like that, which again, we cover. But let's say I knew my bar chords, my sixth and fifth string bar chords. So I wanted to play the 12-bar blues in the key of A, like I just did, but instead of playing it with open chords, I'm going to play them with bar chords. So I have A and D and E. Now, again, you need to know your sixth string and fifth string bar chords, and you would learn this in the course if you need to. But A is up here on the fifth fret of the sixth string, and the D chord, my four chord, is located directly underneath me on the fifth string. And before I even go any further, please understand the power of this. Because if I wanted to be in the key of G and play a 12-bar blues, I could simply move down to the third fret, which is G, and now I'm going to call this my one chord, because I'm in the key of G, and my four chord is located directly underneath it. So no matter where you go on the sixth string, once you find the key that you want to be in, let's say it's a weird key like the key of F sharp, right? And maybe you don't know your key signatures and you don't need to. Here's the cool thing. You can go to F sharp on the sixth string, which means you got to know the notes on the sixth string. And again, we talk about all that. But here's my one chord. If I want my four chord, where is it? Directly, directly below me on the fifth string. There's my four chord. So I could technically play a 12-bar blues in any key. That's super huge. Yeah, so let's, let's keep going just so you got this so it makes sense to you. So here's my one chord. I'm going to go back to the key of A, which is what we've been working with. I've got my one chord here at the fifth fret. My four chord is located directly underneath me. And then my five chord would be two frets higher that's where my five, five chord would be so i'd have one four and then two frets higher at the seventh cool. fret would be my five chord one four five if i wanted to play 12 bar blues in the key of g i'd move down to g and play one four, five. if i wanted to play the 12 bar blues in the key of f four, that's why learning how to think of this as one four five is absolutely crucial for you. But now all of a sudden you can see this is the beauty of guitar. There's a visual thing happening here where we can move this 12 bar blues, this one four five thing around the guitar. Mm -hmm. So that's just something I want you to walk away from being able to use. So if you needed to play the 12 bar blues in the key of B, You've already learned the 12 bar blues. You're already aware of this 145 idea. You just need to find where B is on the sixth string and plot mm -hmm. it in there. So, super cool. Yeah. So, just to whet their appetite about kind of what you can do and the power with this, this 12 bar blues, Steve, 
let's say uh, looks like all we've done so far is we play some open chords that were major. We play some major bar chords. So could you give us an idea if we just change the chord from major to dominant seventh? Mm -hmm. Again, if you don't know what that is, don't worry. Just listen. You'll immediately hear the difference. Right. So I'm going to give it a little bit. Now that I'm playing bar chords, I'm going to give it a little more rhythmic element, too. So I'm going to give it this thing. Because now, because I'm playing bar chords, I can actually lift my fingers a little bit and I can kind of stop these strings so I get a little more bluesy rhythm. I'm just going to play a little bit of the 12-bar blues so you can hear what it sounds like as major. And then I'll, I'll change these to what Dan is referring to as the seventh chord or the dominant seventh chord, which, again, I talk about all that stuff. But here we go. Cool. So that would be major. Now let's take those two chords and convert them into seventh chords. So I'm going to take this A and I'm going to turn it into this. And now all of a sudden you hear this. stop because it's hard to <laughs> stop once you get going so <laughs> it is let me throw something else at you since we're just kind of jamming here sure um okay so what he was playing right there right was he started off with the major then he went to the dominant seventh chord. now there's another super cool chord that sounds complicated but it really ain't which is that ninth which is really fun to play uh on the fourth and fifth right so if you could give us an idea, I'm just gonna you know, what here's how smart Steve is. I'm just gonna throw some chords at him. He can play them perfectly. So what I want you to do is play the one chord with the dominant seventh. Okay. The four chord is a dominant ninth. Okay. And the fifth chord is a dominant ninth. Okay. And maybe you guys can pick it up the difference or or not. It's subtle. I'm gonna okay. And I'm gonna one up you because I'm gonna take I'm not the giving five, you a clue. Well, no, I got it. I'm I'm gonna give the five chord. <laughs> Uh, a sharp nine. I'm going to give the five chord the Jimi Hendrix Ooh. sound. Okay, so we've got okay, so the one chord, dominant? which is going to be seventh. Okay, so, go ahead. so you want the seventh for the one chord. Yeah. And then the four chord, you want it to sound ninth. Which sounds really nice. Yeah. And then the five chord, I'm going to make that into the sharp nine, which is the Jimi Hendrix purple haze chord. Okay. Now again, don't Strange. worry about. You're going to learn all this anyway. But now listen to the blues. When I change these, so my A chord becomes A7, my D chord becomes D9, and my E chord becomes E sharp nine, or raise nine. Okay. So now I get this, Sweet. and this demands a cooler rhythm anyway. Yes. So when I go. Yeah, I mean it's so. That's the thing is, is people people get this misconception about playing guitar. Oftentimes, and I had the same thing when I was younger, or more naive, maybe is the better word. Um, that guitar playing is all about soloing, and guitar playing is not all about soloing. Guitar playing is about learning how to create groove, and groove mm -hmm. almost always starts with rhythm. And then mm -hmm. we learn how to solo. But like, you know, if you get out in the real world and you start playing with other musicians and things like that, you spend 95% of your time playing rhythm and 5% of your time soloing. I'm not saying yep. soloing isn't important. And of course, we talk about soloing in the course and all that sort of thing. But developing a really good sense of rhythm is what makes other players want to play with you. 
mm-hmm. and being able to take these you know these simple chord ideas and and embellish them a little bit. So there's really two things we're talking about here. Number one is rhythm, and then number two is is chords and learning how to how to really understand how these two things work together to make super cool stuff. You know, and that's I think that's awesome. my opinion anyway. So are you up for one more challenge? Of course. All right, I want to throw Steve a challenge here. Okay. So we're going to go minor. We're going to slow it down. And, and I want to show them that it's still the same one, four, five structure. Okay. We're just changing the quality of the chord from major or dominant to minor. So what I want you to do is play the one chord is minor, seventh, a minor seventh. The four chord is a minor ninth. And the five chord is a minor ninth. Okay. Or and then you can throw in that dominant uh, that sharp nine that Hendrix. So maybe, so maybe you yeah, can kind of mix minor, it up for I, us. Yeah, minor. I tend to use the regular nine, but we could do it either way. So okay, so we've got um, a. He's saying we're going to take this A major chord here, and we're going to convert that into an A minor chord by taking the middle finger off. And then I'm going to create a seventh chord the same way I did the last time. Again, you just need to learn what these chords are. And this is just a really sweet sounding chord. Now we go to the D and I've got to go to a D minor chord. Okay, but I'm going to add that ninth in. ways I could do that. Okay. Let's still go with this. So guys, if you've heard something like the thrill is gone, right? And you're like, wow, this is really slow and it sounds kind of sad. That's because it's using minor chords, but you can still use that one, four, five structure. Does that make sense? Super cool. Yeah, it's really fun. That's good stuff. That's Steve, as always, it's a pleasure to be with you, sir. A pleasure being with you, Dan. Probably, I think we've thrown enough at them today. Uh, we've covered the 12-hour blues pretty in-depth. 